Schönbrunn Palace, the seat of the Royal Habsburg Empire, is located in Hitzig, Austria, in the western suburbs of Vienna. When built, it was surrounded by countryside. But over the years, as the city has grown, it has gradually become incorporated into the urban area. Today, the castle and its gardens are the most visited tourist complex in Vienna. With its long and at times momentous history, the Imperial Palace Complex of Schönbrunn is one of Austria's most important cultural monuments. The palace and its ancillary buildings are set in a large park adorned with magnificent gardens, fountains, statues, and architectural features. The name, meaning beautiful well, refers to an artesian well on the grounds from which water was drunk by the court. The site was classified a UNESCO World Cultural Heritage Site in 1996. Schönbrunn was the summer residence of the Habsburgs, Austria's ruling family. The palace's exterior is in the Baroque style, while its interior is Rococo, with its more than 1,400 rooms, 40 of which are open to the public. A visit to Schönbrunn provides an excellent idea of how European royalty lived in the 17th, 18th and 19th centuries. The original project of designing the castle was given by Emperor Leopold I to the renowned Austrian architect J.B. Fischer von Erlach in the late 17th century. The resulting Baroque structure was, however, completely reshaped by the architect Nicolas Pacassi following the Empress Maria Theresa's instructions into a much grander Rococo structure. The palace's severe facade was painted in its now famous yellow color between 1817 and 1819. Inside the palace, Franz Joseph's study presents a complete contrast to the formal magnificence of the walnut room. The bedroom of Franz Joseph was furnished with the same upholstered furniture as his study in 1868 and would remain virtually unchanged until his death 50 years later. The dressing room was a very important feature of any apartment occupied by the Empress Elizabeth, Franz Joseph's wife, as her beauty and exercise regime dominated her daily routine. The Austrian Empress was considered to be one of the greatest beauties in the world, a reputation confirmed by the portraits of her by the artist Franz Xaver Winterhalter. A portrait of Maria Theresa's youngest daughters by the French artist Pierre Venevaux is displayed on the wall of the Western Terrace Cabinet. The mirror's room, with its magnificent white and gold decoration and crystal mirrors, is one of the typical state rooms from the epoch of Maria Theresa. Emperor Franz Joseph's guards were posted in the guard room to protect the entrance to his private apartments. The billiards room is the first room in the suite of chambers of the next to last Habsburg Emperor, Franz Joseph I. The walnut room served as Franz Joseph's audience chamber. Its name derives from the precious walnut paneling lining its walls. It dates to around 1765, when the West Wing was used by Joseph II, the Empress Maria Theresa's co-regent, following the sudden death of Franz Stefan I. The marital bedroom of Franz Joseph and Elizabeth was furnished on the occasion of their marriage in 1854. The Empress's reception room was redecorated in 1854 in the neo-rococo style. The Marie Antoinette salon, used as a dining room during Elizabeth's time, is decorated with white and gold paneling, pale silk wall hangings and magnificent neo-rococo furniture. The table is laid as it was during the time of the Habsburgs, giving evidence of the elaborate dining customs of the epoch. The children's room is hung with portraits of some of Maria Theresa's many daughters. The 
breakfast cabin and is decorated with medallions containing floral appliques, framed in roquet, the work of Elizabeth Christine, the mother of Maria Teresa. The yellow salon on the garden side of the palace contains original furniture from the time of Maria Teresa. Referred to as the Yellow Moiré Room, in the middle of the 18th century, the whole ensemble has recently been restored to its original state. The Three Rosa Rooms, a spacious apartment consisting of one large and two smaller rooms, are named after the artist Joseph Rosa, who was commissioned by Maria Teresa to paint the 15 large-scale landscapes set into their walls. The Great Gallery, 43 meters long and 10 meters wide, provided the perfect setting for the most elaborate court festivities. Balls and grand receptions were held here, along with festive banquets. The white and gold stucco decoration, the tall crystal glass mirrors, and the ceiling frescoes of the Great Gallery constitute a unified work of art. The magnificent gold stucco decoration seemingly dissolves the boundary between wall and ceiling, while gilded floral garlands and weightless consoles lead into the vaults of the frescoed ceiling, which are linked to each other by three-dimensional trophies and heraldic motifs. On either side of the small gallery are the Chinese cabinets, with the oval Chinese cabinet on the left and the round Chinese cabinet on the right. Both rooms have a distinctly intimate character and were used by Maria Teresa for small social gatherings, such as playing cards. The rooms were often used to hold secret state meetings. According to the Baroque conception of princely palaces, architecture and nature must interpenetrate. This belief informs Schönbrunn Palace and its gardens, which together form a unified whole, each element relating to the other in a variety of different ways. The Grand Parterre that extends along the median axis of the palace complex to the foot of the Schönbrunn Hill was laid out during the 1770s. Divided into eight sections of different sizes, it is separated from the lateral baskets by clipped formal hedges. The privy garden is part of the formal camera garden which lies immediately in front of the palace's eastern facade. It received its name around 1870 after the apartments on the ground floor of this wing had been furnished for Crown Prince Rudolf. The sections of the parterre are enclosed by formal flower beds and center around an ancient yew tree. The maze adjoining the great parterre to the southwest was laid out before 1720. More than a traditional maze, it consists of a meandering path that leads to the center without the customary dead ends or false turns. Tall narrow hedges, which were partly covered over, provided a pleasant setting for a gentle stroll. The Neptune Fountain was constructed at the foot of the hill and on its crest the Gloriette was built. The Neptune Fountain was erected as the crowning element of the Grand Parterre in 1776. At the center stands Neptune and his wife Thetis, kneeling at his feet, surrounded by tritons, creatures that are half man and half fish, with their conch shell trumpets. The park's Roman ruins and 32 statues of mythological figures were designed to underscore the ties between the Habsburg monarchy and the Roman Empire. The first well house takes the form of a square pavilion with open semicircular arches at its front and rear. Framed in the arch at the back is a figure of the nymph Egeria. She holds a vase under her arm, from which flows the spring water once so esteemed by the Viennese court. 
Not far from the obelisk fountain, Roman ruins were constructed to add to the romance of the palace gardens. The ensemble consists of a pool enclosed by a massive round arch with lateral walls and creates the impression of an antique building slowly crumbling away into the ground. At the intersections of both the star-shaped systems of avenues east and west of the Grand Parterre is a circular space or rondo with a naiad fountain at its center. At the end of the park at its highest point furthest from the palace stands the Gloriette, an edifice in the neoclassical style dating from 1775. The triumphal arch-like central section is crowned by a massive imperial eagle perched atop a globe, while the external flights of stairs leading up to the lateral arcades are lined with trophies. The Gloriette offers a stunning view of the entire palace of Schönbrunn, as well as the city of Vienna. In 1922, the most important part of the collection of carriages used by the imperial family and Viennese court, including state coaches, ceremonial and gala carriages, sleighs and sedan chairs, was transferred from the imperial court stables at the Vienna Hofburg to Schönbrunn and housed in the former winter riding school, which had been specially adapted for this purpose. Besides masterpieces of Viennese carriage making, the collection also contains three Parisian vehicles. The carriage was generally pulled by a team of two to four horses. It might be a chaise guided by a postillion, riding one of the lead horses, or a coach controlled by a coachman who sat on the box at the front of the carriage and drove the team with reins. Carriages often had a roof of leather over a metal frame which could be let down like a convertible roof in good weather. They were high slung so as to pass over rough roads more easily. A carriage was entered by a side door with steps that folded onto the coach floor. The interior was richly upholstered with fabric and its seats padded with horsehair with an overlay of goose down filled squabs. The interior might include seats that folded down into a travel bed and compartments for guns, liquor, a telescope and maps. Vienna's magnificent Schönbrunn Palace exemplifies the grandeur and power of the Habsburg monarchy. One of Austria's most important cultural monuments, the palace and its extensive park display the mores of a bygone era of European royalty, who wielded an immense command over a vast swath of Central Europe. 